City Line. It's all about bringing joy to your life. I often say, Trace, that hashtag movies matter, and they matter because they can change the way you feel. Terry Hart has the movies that will lift your spirits. I sent a quote from the movie to uh, the group text with girlfriends, yeah. and that started a litany of quotes from the movie. It's that movie. Then it's a match made in heaven, chocolate and wine. It's a beautiful combination. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. This is how I would end my night. And later, food that feeds the soul and brightens your mood. You got good dopamine, good energy, good vibes. Let's eat healthy yeah. and have fun. Let's get through these dark months and uh, gloomy weather and just, you know, put a smile on each other's face. It's City Law with Tracy Moore. to keep my pants from falling down today. <laughs> I don't know. Is it me? Welcome, welcome everyone to City Line today. We are going to make you happy today. We're going to bring you some joy because do we not need more joy? Yeah. I mean, come on. So here's the plan. We have chocolate and wine. Yeah. We have simple DIYs that are going to bring you some happiness and even a dopamine inducing recipe to get that brain in a good place. But first, we're gonna get started with some feel-good movies with Terry Hart, my girl, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, and you brought the yellow, you brought the dopamine, I love it. Now tell me, Terry, was this a hard assignment for you? Well, I often say, Trace, that hashtag movies matter, mm -hmm. and they matter because they can change the way you feel. And so these next five movies are all movies that inspire in different ways. Um, I, I really thought long and hard about them because I love movies so much. Yes. But I'm really confident that these five are going to tap into whatever somebody needs to just Tick it up a notch. I love that. And it's an easy way to get that dopamine hit. Okay, so let's get to the first film on your list. What have you got? Bend It Like Beckham. Yes! Yes, Bend It Like Beckham is about two friends. Yes! Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's a good uh, one. It's a good one. It really is, like I said, I wanted to find movies that inspire in different ways. So Bend It Like Beckham reminds us to live the life that we want to live, mm -hmm. not the life that we're supposed to live. I love that. And so it's about two young girls who love soccer, football, I know it's football, but, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Kira Knightley's mom doesn't really want her to play football, right. she wants her to be more girly, mm -hmm. and then Parminder Niagara's mom um, and dad are strict Indian parents yeah. who are having no part of it, and they find a way, yeah. and they find a way to still love their parents while doing it. Great movie, Bend It Like Beckham reminds you to live the life you want, not the life you're supposed to. That's right, a good lesson for the kids. Yeah. Not my kids, my kids, <laughs> will you listen to me? But all the other kids out there, yes, do what you yes. wanna do. Yeah. Okay, the next one on your list that might make us feel happy. Well, this one is going to make you believe in true love. Okay. The Princess Bride. Yay! Yay! Always. Yeah. It's never, it's never gonna get old. Never. Of course, you're gonna be rooting for Buttercup and Wesley. I don't know why they named her Buttercup. It sounds like a horse. <laughs> it really um, does. But whatever. <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's part of the charm of the movie. Yeah. Uh, the three words, as you wish, mm. will be different every time. And of course, the base storyline of a grandpa reading this fairy tale to his son who thinks he wants explosions right. and fights and then and doesn't want any icky kissing and then he kind of warms up to that icky kissing yeah. and a great reminder that there is nothing like true love. There is nothing like true love. Mm -hmm. I really, I lean into contemporary romance when we're in times like this because I need, I want to be reminded Absolutely. that there is love, right? We can all fall in love. Okay, your next film, and any film I might add about doggies, <laughs> as long as they're, they're, they're not dying. No. Oh, I can't well, watch those. This one. This one is good. It's good, it's great, it's yeah. hilarious. I'm saying this is guaranteed to change your mood. Okay. Best in show. Oh, it's a line. mockumentary, Christopher Guest, um, dare I say Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara have never been funnier. Ooh, I said what I said. That's high praise. They are hilarious yeah. in this. It's about a group of people who are on their way to a dog show, to compete in a dog show. Uh -huh. And as I said, it's a mockumentary. It is 
I watched this movie because I substituted it for another movie that yeah. frankly didn't age very well. Yeah. Uh, which happens sometimes. It's a lot of those. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And my husband came upstairs. He was really busy. He came upstairs just to like pop in. Couldn't leave. Once you start watching <laughs> it, you're hilarious. I sent a quote from the movie to uh, the group text with girlfriends. Yeah. And that started a litany of quotes from the movie. It's that movie that <laughs> yeah. stays with you and you will laugh your heads off. Christopher Guest makes these amazing mockumentaries Spinal Tap, this one, Best and show and uh, a nice double header would also be a mighty wind oh nice you know but brilliantly done like oh. mockumentaries you have to nail that brand so specifically in order to make them funny uh, totally and you really have to depend on your actors and when you yes. have actors that are as good as I mentioned Eugene Levy Catherine O'Hara Bob Balaban there are so many of them and Christopher Guest goes back to these people they make these yeah. movies together and they're all just spectacular and that's why they always and the work doggies are cute and the doggies are cute yeah. Parker Posey yes. is also part of this group uh-huh I'm telling you her performance in best show should have had an Oscar we got to start nominating comedic performances yes absolutely because you have to have a big brain to be funny totally you really do yeah. like it's it's the comedians are smart people often. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk food. I always mm -hmm. want to talk about food, but let's talk about a movie <laughs> that has food in it. Yes. So this one, it's called Chef. Okay. John Favreau wrote and directed and stars in it. And this one inspires us mm. to remember our passion. Okay. Sometimes we'll be going along in life and we'll be like, hey, wait a minute, how did I end up here? Right. And John Favreau's character is a chef who is in a really high-end kind of hoity-toity restaurant mm -hmm. and he gets a bad review, freaks out, goes up, it goes viral. This is kind of the beginning of Twitter when this movie came out. Yeah. And uh, he goes back to basics and gets a food truck and remembers why he fell in love with food. He reconnects yes. with his son. There's all kinds of heartwarming moments. Sofia Vergara plays his ex-wife. She's Ooh. delightful in it. And it just reminds us to keep in touch with why we started what we started. Yeah. And re remember that passion of what got us to where we are. Let's not forget that passion. Oh, I love that. Chef, that John Favreau. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, the next film um, you say people might think is a Christmas classic, but this is an all year round classic when you want to laugh. Yeah, I know we're in January and you, <laughs> and you might be going, Terry Hart, do you know what month it is? Um, I do know what month it is, but I am, I am ripping the Band-Aid off and saying, stop classifying certain movies that you can only watch at certain times. Yeah. Elf. Elf. Is a 12 month a year movie. It just is. It just is. And this one for me reminds us to not lose the child in ourselves. Right. There is nothing <laughs> like Will Ferrell yelling, Santa! <laughs> you know, with that excitement that I, I honestly do not think that anybody else could have played this role other than Will Ferrell. Yeah. Because he commits like nobody else commits. When they're doing the clausometer yeah. about <laughs> believing in Santa Claus and they all start singing, yes. Santa Claus is coming. I'm telling you, I teared up. Aww. There's just, there is really, really a wonderful spirit to this movie. Right. I actually interviewed them all. This movie came out in 2003. Yeah. So I interviewed them all 20 years ago. Okay. And I remember watching it and walking out and saying, this is going to be a Christmas classic. You were right. And now I'm saying it's a year-round classic. That's right. You yeah. can watch it in July yeah. if you want. <laughs> That's that right. You need to get the happy going, yeah. so don't give yourself limitations on what you can watch when. Absolutely not. Okay, the feel-good movie of the year, you're calling it? Or yeah. maybe it's the think-deep movie of the year? It depends on who you ask. Well, it's an interesting point that you bring up because this mm. is a movie that does that rare thing, which is both. And, yes. of course... Barbie. Yes. It is. Yes. I'm telling you. Absolutely. Yeah. It is a movie <laughs> that you can watch as just like the spectacular confection and the artistry and the production design that it is. The ridiculousness of Ryan Gosling playing <laughs> Ken and saying his job is beach. More <laughs> beach jobs, please. Um, that montage of all the all the Ken singing push, <laughs> which gets me every time. Or... Yeah. You can watch it as a commentator, as a commentation, as commentary. a commentary. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Um, on society. That's right. And a deconstruction of what women go through on the daily. Um, so it's both. It's layered, which makes it even more brilliant. Totally. And yeah. it also means that it really makes you feel good because not only are you having a good time watching it, 
but you might actually be thinking about a few things too. That always That's makes right. me feel good. Me too. Yeah. Yes, I do know that about you. You like depth. I do. She does, and humor. Thank you so much, <laughs> Terry Hart. Thanks, Joyce. Uh, we'll be back after the break. Stay with us. Feel happy. Coming up, chocolate and wine. Sometimes it's hard to believe I get paid to do this. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> talking about a couple of things I think you'll be interested in. I've got a question for you. Who loves chocolate? Yeah. Who loves wine? Yeah. It's our Spark Joy special, so we thought we'd have some wine and some chocolate pairings with sommelier Renee Sferazza. She always brings the good stuff, this woman. Wow. I'm so excited for these pairings. Obviously, like, you know me very well. Um, right. My love for chocolate is pure, it is real, and it is intense. I so feel you, you on that. I'm also a chocolate lover. But you know what really sparks joy for me? It's going to sound so on brand. It is a really great food and wine pairing. Yes. But more than that, like, I've given you great food and wine pairings on this show. I've given them to, like, my friends in my life and watching their reaction. That makes me so happy. Oh, I cannot communicate nice. how happy it makes me. Yeah. So that's what I really want to focus on with this because mm -hmm. it's not just about the wine and the chocolate, it's the right wine and the right, right chocolate. chocolate together. So yeah. before we get into it, I have some five rules for pairing for us today, okay. all right? Give us the They're rules. They're really, really simple, very simple <laughs> rules. So the first one is acidity always goes with acidity. Bright With bright, you're having a good time. Okay. Second one, bitter things make other bitter things more bitter. So if you have lots Ooh. of tannins in wine, you're going to eat a bitter thing, like the bitterness of a dark chocolate. Yeah. That's going to make it taste more bitter. Okay. All right? Okay. So salty foods make wine seem more opulent. They mm -hmm. tone down bitter notes and make them more soft. Okay. Fatty foods always need a structured wine to pair with them. I mean, it's kind of like wearing like, a pair of structured pair of pants. Like, it really tidies things up a little bit. Very Got similar. It. And then last but not least, both spicy and sweet foods like sweet wines. Oh, okay. I know. These are good rules. So it's not, you're not just throwing a Kit Kat bar together no. with some Prosecco. No, like you there's definitely some rules not. to this. Okay, so. And it's so easy that you picked up on that one right away, which is great. Yeah, like and there are that. rules. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the first one. We're gonna one. start over here. This is some really nice fruit chocolate from Chocolat de Cat. You can pick any one and oh have my it. Gosh. And I've paired it with the Pixie Sparkling from Rose Hall Run. This is out in Prince Edward County. Mm. It is good. So you have like a white chocolate strawberry one. Mm -hmm. And now take a sip of this wine. Mm. So what you're probably going to notice right away is there's a brightness in the wine, but there's also brightness that in that delicious. fruit. So we're matching acidity with acidity. We're also bringing fruit notes together, that sweet with sweet together. Mm -hmm. You have a white chocolate too, which has fattiness in it. So we want something structured with the bubbles mm -hmm. as well. So you see how that's starting to make this great pairing kind of come together. It makes it fresh. It does. And you want to go it back and It makes it bite. jump out of your mouth. It's so good. I know, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to move along because I'm stuck I know, here. I know. Okay, so we're moving along. We're moving along. Okay. So now we're going to go into sweet with sweet, okay? Yes. Which you would think might be a little bit too opulent. It feels like it's going to be a lot. But it's not. I promise. I promise okay. it's not going to be a lot. So this is the Anselman Ortega Baron Auschlese from 2021. Ooh, this well is a done, German. The pronunciation. Thank you very Ooh. much. I'm killing my pronunciations lately. So good. Uh, this is from Faltz in Germany. And it's made from Ortega, which is a native grape there. It has a lot of fruit oh, laden yeah. note. It's sweet in the finish. It's lovely, but it's actually not. It's 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 not like syrup. Mm -mm, no, like it's, it's bright. It's, it's it's bright. And That's I want a great you to have it, it with uh, this black and white brigadero from Mary's Brigadero. So why don't we explain? Can you explain what a brigadero is yeah, for those who don't so know? Brigadero's are really fun. It is a Brazilian style sweet. It's made with condensed milk that's cooked down with either chocolate or with vanilla flavoring, and <laughs> they chocolate. are very sweet and they have a lot of texture to them. Mm -hmm. So when you have it with this sweet wine, this Baranau Schleiße, it's a late harvest, mm -hmm. you're really getting that sweet with sweet mix and that brightness too. It's a beautiful combination. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. This is how I would end my night every And night. you would think that it would be too much, but actually this, when whenever they do dessert wines, I'm like, but it should be either the wine or the dessert, not no, both. but now you see. This is perfect. It is. I sweet get it. like sweet. Yes. 
All right, you want to go for something Delicious. completely different now? Because remember how I said spicy also likes sweet? Yeah. Okay, you're a spicy food lover. Mm -hmm. I'm a spicy food lover. I'm spicy. I'm spicy too. Mm -hmm. yeah, always dressed in black, but spicy. I'm trying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, so I have some spicy Mexican chocolate here. Okay. I want you to take a bite of the chocolate first. Yeah. I'm and... I'm just gonna leave it there so you can see what it looks like. Where'd you get the chocolate from? I got this chocolate from the Dej also. Mm. So all the everything's from a Canadian run business, by the way. I love so that when you, you have that. something Mexican spice or spicy, like a spicy chocolate, it's good. it's good. Now you can either have a sweet wine, which will get rid of that sweetness, mm -hmm. or you can have something with some high fruit notes. So this is the Diora. This is the La Petite Grace Pinot Noir coming Ooh. from Monterey. Lots of high fruit tone notes in there. And what you'll probably get on the palate is more like a radial feeling. It shouldn't make it feel bitter, but the spice radiates out across your palate like you drop a, a stone in a pond yes. and it starts to dissipate slowly. That is exactly what happened in my mouth. I know. Like <laughs> exactly like that. So it basically it spreads mm -hmm. it out evenly. It does. Oh, that's beautiful. And it doesn't make it more spicy. That would be no, bad. No, that would be bad. It would it's be the bad. perfect amount of spice. It is. So you don't always Very have nice. to go with sweet wines, but you want to pick something that has low tannins like this Pinot Noir and high yeah. fruit notes. I love this. I feel very greedy having it all to myself. So our DIY expert, Mary Segay, is here. She's going to join us for the last Yay. pairing. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Renee, I don't know. She looked you up. She figured out what you're into because <laughs> I think you're going to be into this last pairing. So we've been talking about chocolate so far, but not everybody just likes chocolate. I also have a bit of a savory pairing with some oh. popcorn. Oh. Yeah. So, and I have one for you over here, You're Tracy. A fan? I love popcorn. And Amazing. I see the caramel popcorn, I'm excited. I yes. know. <laughs> so, we're pairing this with a really fun wine. This is a Retsina. This is the Keshri, the Kechibari Retsina. Retsina is a really old style Greek wine that was originally made by the ancient Greeks when they were trying to transport wine in amphora. They covered them, the inside of it, to make it more waterproof and not leak proof with okay. pine resin. Oh, that's interesting. So, that's when a you different taste, taste this, I know, and I'll describe it for everyone listening. Yeah. You get really like a piney, fruity, citrusy mm -hmm. note all together. And when yeah. you taste it, there's a bit of sweetness, but a lot of acidity. Absolutely. Now, this is gonna go great with either our classic or our white cheddar, classic or white cheddar popcorn. Give that a try. And then I want you to go in for the off pairing, which would be the caramel corn. Well, it's very good with the white cheddar. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. What, did, you, did you do it with the regular I one did or it with the, the regular? Cheddar. I and like what did it you with think? the regular. Okay, I'm I like it with the regular. I'm gonna do it with the caramel corn, which you said is like a no-no. It's an off pairing because what you're gonna do is it's you're gonna bring up this acidity in a very weird way, mm -hmm. and it's also going to pull make those savory notes much more prominent. Yeah. I love Remember it. Remember how white I cheddar. was saying the yes. salty notes so make good. wine seem more opulent? Yes. And now you're taking that away and it's not as opulent and delicious anymore. It just goes to show there is actual science behind these pairings. There is. Um, I would actually drink it all and eat it with anything, but I'm also a heathen. So <laughs> if you want to follow the rules, there's a reason for them because the two taste really, really good together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I actually heard, and thank you, Mary, for joining us. Uh, you two Thanks stick around here. here. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, stick around. Here, we can, we can cheers. I, and sit. cheers. I wanted to yeah. share this with the audience and Probably. also, yeah. You deserve some of this good stuff. But also, I had heard that it's your birthday. <laughs> so these ladies brought you here for your birthday because they want to watch the show. That's right. <laughs> So are they taking you out for lunch after? They are. They okay. Are. We're going to start your lunch with some chocolate. Excellent. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, taste it. Pass it around. <laughs> uh, pass that down, all the way down. Thank you, Renee Svaratza. Let's go to break. Happy birthday. Coming up, food that will literally improve your mood. Can you smell onions, garlic, you've got that oil, like there is no better smell in the world, right? It's the best smell ever. boy out there. Welcome back everyone. Today it's all about joy. How to create it. Hold on to it. And in this segment, how to eat it. Here are the recipe that's sure to put a smile on your face. Matt Dean Pettit, our Whoa. chef of the day. Put it right here, Matt. Put it right there. Let's talk a little bit about this because we gave you actually a special request. Yes. We said please create a recipe using foods that contain dopamine. We know 
Dopamine acts on areas of the brain to give us a feeling of pleasure, mm -hmm. of satisfaction, and happiness. So we all need more of that in this wild, wild world we're living in right now. What recipe did you come up with for our brain and our happiness? I love that you asked me to do this too. I consider myself a generally happy, go, a happy lucky guy. person, as you know, yeah. right? We spent a lot of time together. Yeah. So thank you for reaching out for this special assignment for me. It was perfect thank for you. Thank you, Chef MVP yeah. here. Uh, so you know what? It's all about, yeah, good vibes, good energy, dopamine. Let's create that good, uh, healthy brain energy and, and positive energy. So uh, today we're doing a beautiful salmon Florentine dish. Ooh. Yes. Sounds... So talk to me about the Florentine part of this because this looks amazing. It looks incredibly healthy. Yes. We know salmon's great for the brain. It is. So salmon's great for the brain. Why? Yeah. Because we have omega-3s, yes. right? Omega-3s are one of the you know receptors that just click off dopamine in our brains. Yeah. We want to have leafy greens. So in this case, in this Florentine dish, Florentine is using spinach. That's so what it means. You've come to the party with a green dress. Yes. So we are like, I didn't get the memo today. I'm the Florentine. Right? You are the Florentine. Yes. The official Florentiner. Yes, I am. absolutely. There yes. we go. The official Florentiner. Anytime you use spinach, are anytime. you sauteing so spinach? Anytime. You're so a Florentine dish originating obviously from Florence, Italy, uh, made way in French culinary. Uh, cooking, of course. So anything, a Florentine dish is anything with a sautéed or a spinach base. Oh. So how many times have you made something at home and you're like... All the time. Uh, all the time. Yeah. And you have spinach. Spinach is amazing. Going back to the dopamine, feeling good, yeah. you want to use something with leafy greens. So in there is a foliate. So foliate is in spinach. Mm -hmm. Foliate is a receptor. It is part of the reason why it just clicks off. It's full of antioxidants. It's brain and heart healthy. That's So right. again, two of the major things when we're looking at our food, again, as a chef, you always want to be part of the solution, not the problem. Right. So it is eating healthy. And again, don't get me wrong, everybody loves the occasional cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. We all do. And nobody's saying cut that out forever, but we've got to be really conscious of what we're putting in our body. Yeah. So high protein foods, leafy greens, you know, stay away from as much, um, you know, processed. Uh, processed foods and sugar. Yeah. You know what I mean? That process, that, that sugar is what's really, really doing a number on us. Get mm -hmm. our sleep. Have all these things in our, in our life that we need, right? Yeah. Healthy sleep, caffeine, alcohol. These are all things that go against the dopamine. Yes. But what we're doing here is going to give us all... Did you notice any of that wine we were uh, hey, chugging you know back what? in Listen, the last Listen, Renee's going to get angry at me <laughs> over there. <laughs> Renee's Listen, my Renee's my friend. We're we're there. Moderation, so don't worry. Moderation, moderation, moderation is the name of the game. It Have is. some salmon and some wine. It, everything in moderation. Everything right? in moderation. And you know what? <laughs> so again, good energy, good vibes. So here it is. So super simple recipe. Restaurant quality. If we can look at that beautiful crispy skin it's beautiful. on that salmon, how do we do it? And a foolproof way for you to do at home. So salmon, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, okay, uh, or sunflower oil or canola oil, whatever you have. Uh -huh. We're just gonna pop this down. We're gonna go so oil on it. We are going to season that. I've started our oven at 425. We're gonna bake this. You're gonna get the most foolproof crispy skin every single time. I have parchment paper paper mm -hmm. in front of me. 425, this is going in the oven. Skin down skin always. Down, skin down always. And as you can see, we've got one going here because, okay. of course, the beauty of TV. So this is for, this is around 15 to 18 minutes. Okay. Okay, so now our salmon is done. It's cooked. It's ready to go. I'm going to just bring it back here as we play. We have a hot pan. This is where we're going to make the spinach Florentine. So we've got our hot pan. We're just going to go a little bit of... Extra virgin olive oil in here. Yep. And again, we're doing this sort of through, you know, real time. Yeah. One cup of chopped onions. So you want to chop that down and get it going. Uh, four cloves of garlic right there. Again, great for our immune system, right? Yes. We've got that beautiful. And, you know, here we are in studio. Can you smell onions, garlic? You've got that oil. Like, there is no better smell in the world, right? It's the best smell ever. And, you know, it's interesting when you talk about dopamine. Yep. Um, we often think that the quick things that give us a spike yeah. are the things that make us happy. It's not. It's actually the things, the high quality fats, the it really is. good vegetables. Those are the things that actually affect our mood and our happiness. Again, going back to the cheeseburger. Don't get me wrong. I love a cheeseburger. Me too. And it's that instant, but it's not going to help you over time. No. You bring up a really good point. Yeah. So again, we're going to do this all in live time. Translucent, usually around two it's to three minutes sound. with our onions. It's a great sound, right? That's yeah. a fun sound. We can even turn this down a little bit. We're gonna go in with some mushrooms. So we have some beautiful just cremini mushrooms. Nice. Again, everybody in the pool. White wine. So we're gonna go and again, 
You could let this cook down for probably about, you know, two, three minutes. Really just make the, the onions soft. We're going to make them translucent. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it in, of course, because we're doing TV. Mm -hmm. We have a cup of, or a half a cup, pardon me, of white wine. What's the rule with cooking wine? It's going to cook all the al uh, alcohol right off, It right? is, it is, and you're right. So when that oh, cooks down... Oh, and also use wine that's good quality Thank wine. Thank you. Tracy Moore. Don't buy that cheap wine that nobody wants to drink. Yes, chef. Yeah. Yes, chef. Always cook with wine that you would drink. Right. You know what? But I will always say, if there's a bottle on your back in your, you know... Your, uh, your shelf in that home that's maybe yeah. been three, four days, maybe a week. That's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's still fine, right? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, of course fine. it's fine. Of course. <laughs> uh, heavy cream. It better be fine. It better be fine. Heavy cream. Heavy cream is mm -hmm. going to give us that beautiful richness that we've got. We've got a tablespoon or two, who's counting, of Dijon. I oh, love lovely. Dijon. Me Onion, too. garlic, Dijon. Yeah. You can just sing to me. We're just going to do a little pinch it's of smoked paprika. Town, it too. is flavor town. Dijon. Smoked paprika. We're going to season. And again, we've got two cups of spinach, as we talked about. Yep. Right? We want that leafy greens. So our spinach, or pardon me, our salmon is ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cover that. I've turned up the heat a little bit here. And you can see how easy we're going to do this. Again, power of TV. I've got our beautiful Florentine base already going here. Gorgeous. So if we can just shift over. So this is cooked down. You have that beautiful, beautiful sort of richness. Super creamy. You want a little bit of that sauce in there, of course. Lovely. We're going to make that beautiful Florentine. I should have let you do this with that matching color I could do apparel, it. I match right? the recipe today. I know you that do. doesn't always happen. Right. Um, spinach also does not take a long time to it cook down. It doesn't. So I guess is that the last thing you usually it, throw in the it pan? It is. It's the last thing as we can see and I covered it. Again, I yeah. want to reduce my heat and cover. It's you know what I mean? Easily. It is going to wilt. And if you can see, I'm just bringing over we're gonna flip this and look at that beautiful crispy skin. I like can everything never get was done. That now you can. Skin. Restaurant quality dish, ready that is to go. So good. You know, you can hit that with a little, a little hit of lemon. You've got good dopamine. Again, good energy, good vibes. Let's eat healthy yeah. and have fun. Let's get through these dark months and uh, gloomy weather, and just you know, put a smile on each other's face. Do you mind if I go for it, Chef? Because I, I already like, I already. As as she's already halfway yeah. through, it's like, do you mind if I go through with it, mm -hmm. Chef? Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Delicious. Right? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Listen, I don't know how you feel about the show today, but I've had wine, chocolate, mm. and really good salmon. It's mm. been a banner day for me. Great recipe, MDP. The recipe is at CityLine.tv. Let's head to break. we got more coming up. Mm. Fantastic. Good, right? Coming up, DIY that can create J-O-Y. Listen, this time of year, it's a little depressing, it right? So we're going to try to do some little things around the house that can bring us a little joy. That's why I started with him. This is Ozzy, and we're going to find out how Mary Sagay is using him in this incredible segment. And please welcome Mary. I'm so excited about this one. So we're talking about joy and yeah. generating cheer and cheerfulness. It doesn't need to cost a lot of money, especially if you like design and art. And what Mary has done is gone out and planned a whole bunch of DIYs yes. that you can do and spark some joy in your home, in your, in your world. And Absolutely. we're going to be starting with your jar joy right jar. There. Your joy jar. Listen, this time of year, it's a little depressing, it can right? Be. So we're gonna try to do some little things around the house that can bring us a little joy. Love right? that. So we're gonna start off with our jar. I'm gonna get you to do the work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I can sit back Boss and relax. Around, lady. Okay? No we're gonna problem. start with staining our jar with stuff that you can find at the dollar store. Okay. Right. So we're gonna put some glue. Yeah. At the very do I just bottom. Just pour it in. Just pour it in as much as you think. Yep. Perfect. Too much? That's a good. That's good enough. Okay. And then you're gonna put some drops of food coloring in there. You can okay. pick any color food coloring you want. Green, blue, whatever it may be. Is that enough? A little bit more. Okay. So you it's want vibrant. It bright. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> and you're gonna mix it around. <laughs> Listen, if you tell me more, I'm going to go for it. Listen, I like it bright because yeah. I like it when the color comes out pink, right? Yes, exactly. So once you have it mixed, I think that's good enough. Yeah, okay. You're going to start coating it around. So you're going to pick up the, the jar and then just spin it around until it completely coats the inside, oh. right? Oh. Okay. And you got to get it into every crevice on the inside. Okay, there's an and art to And I have like this. a piece here for you so we don't get anything on the table. Yeah, that's Once a great idea. Once you have idea. that all done, you're going to flip it upside down. 
and well, let all the all excess done. run out. But is it, can I flip it yet or should I try and get because it Because there's enough first? glue, it'll probably just drip okay. down on either side. Oh, I like that it's marble. Exactly. That's nice. So you're gonna leave it like this for about <laughs> Thank you, I'll take it. Good Thank job, you. you did a good job. Thank you. We're gonna leave it like this for like a couple of hours okay. until the glue dries and all the excess is out. Right. Then you're gonna put it in your oven on an oven tray for about oh. 45 minutes on 200. Okay. Got and it. And once it's done, it's gonna come out looking like this. Just stained slightly. So but look at so that. Pretty. You've got a gorgeously stained jar. And then what are we putting in it, Mary? I like to put in notes of joy. So okay. you can either write things that are good for you, things that you want reminders about, or yeah. you can have friends and family leave a note for you as they visit. That's nice. Which is really cute. <gasps> you are so strong and powerful. That's yeah. nice, Mary. And you can pick one up in the morning on your way out to work. Yes. And just brighten up your day before you head out there. Remember who you are before you head out there in the world and hopefully put a smile on your face and then you can put a smile on someone else's exactly. face. Remember you who you are. Add that one. First. Remember who you are. Remember who you, Remember are. Who you are. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. And so easy and doesn't cost a lot of money. No. Okay, can we talk about my dog now? Yes. <laughs> this is a really fun project. So mm -hmm. essentially we're going to transfer this picture mm -hmm. onto a tote bag. Tote oh, bags, I love it. Everyone loves tote bags. We use them for grocery shopping, yes. shopping, whatever it is, right? They're definitely having a moment all the kids want tote bags now yeah. it's like there's not even anything special in there it's just exactly. having the tote bag right so we're gonna take our image we're just gonna print that out and then you're gonna coat it with glue so I'll okay. get you to do that so do I just like really go to town here yep we're gonna have it sorry completely coated and then you're gonna just spread it around so that the entire image is covered and do I just keep it on the image not on yes, the bag right? on the image not on the bag okay so we spread our Mod Podge did we tell them what it is it's Mod Podge? It's Mod Podge glue yeah so is there a reason why you'd want to use this glue? Uh, it's the, the type of glue it's perfect for transferring picture onto tra onto fabric okay so there's good. specific ones that you can use All I'll right. take that for you Thank and you. then you just flip make sure you put it in the exact spot that you want it to be in Ozzy where do you want to be honey <laughs> oh boy okay that's here okay. we'll do that's okay all right and then you just pat it down and you're gonna want to leave that for like a day to completely dry through okay fair okay yeah that needs some time it's nice and soaked yes and you want it soaked because that's how you get the image to transfer onto the bag got it now this might be a little bit messy, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like once it's dry. Okay. This is what we're gonna have. And the next step, once it's completely dry, is to use a rag uh -huh. and some warm water. Okay. And just drench it. Drench the back oh, of it. Oh, okay. Just drench it. Drench it. And then you can slowly start peeling it off. If it's hard to peel off, you can mm -hmm. also just like scrub the paper off with the rag and the water. Oh. It'll come off. Okay, I never believe these transfers are gonna work until they work. You know the tattoo transfers I you know, put on? I know, Oh, I lived for those. Those were, it's, <clears throat> and this is just like that. Okay, more? That's good. Okay. And then once it's dry, <coughs> not dry actually, you can start peeling it off. You see how like oh, the, cool. and the paper comes off, but the image stays on the bag. Yeah. Right, and if it's a little hard to get the paper off, like I said, you can use the towel or the rag or whatever to start scrubbing it off. Oh, that's awesome. You see how that comes off so easily though? What's so cool is that uh, Mary actually did one for us, and I just need you to see how like how so much cute. of a distinguished gentleman he looks like on this. T oh, thanks! <laughs> so Please cute. note. He is wearing an Adidas jacket and a chain because I am that kind of dog mom. I tortured him. I love it. I love it. It's such a cute picture. Very, very cool. Okay, moving right along. Uh, flowers are art. We're going to do the art. Okay, let's get right into the art because this is gorgeous. And what a great way to like give you that punch of dopamine. Exactly. So what I like to do that. with this project is reach out to some family and friends, ask them to send me some words that describe me Aww. so that I can remember how people see me instead of, you know, sometimes you get down about yourself yeah, yeah and this tea is actually words that have been sent to me by those that you work with your team oh my so this gosh. is actually about you oh it's me i'm like because i could say yes funny hilarious kind queen thank you you're welcome that's very nice so when you print it out on paper you want to invert the picture because okay. once you transfer it in like you can even see it on the background it'll come out like like this. Got it. Okay, so we do so the same thing it? that we did with the bag. Yeah. We're gonna turn it over onto the side with the color, coat it in glue. Yep. Place it where you want it, let it dry, 
coat it with water, and then take off the paper. And you just have a transfer onto canvas. Look at that beautiful piece of art you get. You can put that anywhere in your home and you just remind yourself of who you are whenever you need that hit. Mary, thank you so much. You oh, you got another also one. Just print it and frame it if you want. Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> T is for all generous, vibrant, smart. Go on. Just <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, we're going to break. Mary, you're <laughs> genius. Coming up, are the New Year's resolutions you made just weeks ago already doomed to fail? You know, I, I just broke mine right now with Renee's wine and popcorn backstage. <laughs> That's what I did. Did you know, you might not be surprised about this, only 9% of those that make New Year's resolutions actually keep them. So I brought Terry Hart back. Tracy Peart joins us as well. <laughs> We're gonna talk about this. Why do most resolutions fail? We're at that point in the year, we're a couple of weeks into the year. Most of us have given up already. <laughs> Give it the good old college try. January 1st. This whole idea of January 1st, you're supposed to overhaul your life. I feel like it's a problem. Yeah. I think that's exactly why it doesn't work. I think yeah. because we're doing it on a schedule that's not really matching when we should do, when we should make these changes. Yes. So it's like January 1st comes along, we all feel pressure like, <laughs> okay, we have to change our lives, we have to do this, we're gonna get better at this and get better at that. And we should just do it throughout the year when we feel naturally the occasion comes where we're like, you know what, I need to start doing this better or start doing that or decluttering, whatever it is that's going on in your life that you wanna fix. Yeah. Do it when the moment hits, not on January 1st. I think that's why it doesn't work out. No, January 1st, you're still hungover, man. <laughs> like, really? I'm gonna hit the gym and change my whole life and organize my pantry? Yeah. Not today. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. not. Do you do resolutions, Tear? Um, I have done resolutions um, unsuccessfully. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. I, like am, most of us. I am the 81%. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I just broke mine right now with Renee's wine and popcorn backstage. <laughs> That's what I did. Uh, but I I feel like I should resolve <laughs> to have a better memory because <laughs> okay. I always forget what how bad you know are. how bad I am. I've been trying to same, lose the same 20 pounds yeah. starting January 1st for 10 years, and uh, <laughs> got a surprise, it's still there. But I feel <laughs> like it's because. That 20 pounds, I think, is going to be gone February 1st. Surprise, it takes four months to lose 20 pounds. Thank you. A yes. resolution is not going to happen in a month. Right. So I think for me, it's framing what I can do in a different amount of time. Yeah. Is committing to like, like I like dry January. Okay, I yes. like I like not drinking in yeah. January. I think that that's a reasonable thing. Some people do sober October. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a nice reset. Yes, um, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why um, not? And uh, maybe I'm thinking <laughs> about wine too much. <laughs> um, but I, I do think that the resolution idea, if we change the wording, Resolution mm. just sounds so set in stone. Yeah. And that I feel can be a little bit, little bit intimidating. I don't mind the restart for the new year. I don't mind January 1st being a bit of a turn the calendar and start something fresh. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we should, I mean, listen, we uh, 2023 was a year. Mm -hmm. It was a time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we all could be a little bit kinder to ourselves too. Yeah. And maybe instead of a re resolution say like, small little change. That's it's what the I was punitive. Say. Yeah. It's the punitive nature of it, um, and I feel like I do. First of all, I just want to mention you went dry for many, many months in 2023. I did. You kept going on and on and on with it, which I thought was very admirable because it rubbed off on me. Mm -hmm. So I drink a lot less as, as well, and that's you know that's a good thing. She doesn't I've drink been at all. around you for decades, and yes. I don't drink, and yet yes. that didn't rub off on you. No, because <laughs> you want to know why? You've never been a drinker. Yeah. She's a drinker. Yeah, yeah. So when she said no to wine for like you did. Probably Probably didn't pick up a glass of wine till like April. Yeah, no, it was four months. It, that's a long time for us wine drinkers. Yeah, I said a hundred days. <laughs> yeah, and then it went longer. She just kept going. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Trace never drinks. You're not. A, you're not a drinker. So what, what I was gonna say is, um, I do do restarts, but I often do them in September, and my restarts are not resolutions. They're habits. 
Yes. So what new habits can I add in? How much more money can I put into the savings account? How much less can I buy online? How much more fiber can I get into my diet? Like to me, these things are so much more doable than saying this is the year when 30 pounds gets dropped. Why September? September for me, because I'm such a nerd, <laughs> I loved the start of the school year so hardcore that I still think in semesters. Okay. <laughs> so okay. September's back to school. Like, no. September is always, okay, got, we're done with summer vacation and, like, the whole kids staying up really late, us doing whatever we want, going away for vacation, time to get structure. And you know structure makes my eyes dance. Yeah, like, I yeah, like structure. Excited about that. I'm excited. Yeah. So it's like, let's get into the regular gym routine. Let's get into making lunches again. Let's get into making my meals and doing my meal prep. And that's a good time for me to start doing things like, okay, how are my fan finances looking? How's my closet looking? How's my diet looking? Like all of those things and just start creating new habits. But don't you think too, we shouldn't make them such mountains that we they put in front of yes. ourselves, right? Like yes. you look at it like it's so insurmountable. I'm never gonna be able to climb this mountain. Maybe if you wanna stop smoking cigarettes and you smoke 10 a day, maybe start with, I'm gonna smoke five a day. Yes. yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and then from there, work your way down. I think that's more, I think that's why resolutions don't work. Uh, don't work because I, it's like at the top of the year, we're all like, we're going to lose 50 yeah. pounds. And it's like, that's not going to happen. Stop it. It's not going to happen. Yeah. How about you go for five? Yes. You and know what I mean? A few little or drink more exactly. water. Yeah, drink more, more water. Have more greens. I also love the fact sometimes what works for me is partnering up. Yeah. So I started doing something in 2022, maybe 2021. I don't know. It was pandemic time where I started getting outside. Hashtag get outside. Yeah. And I would put it on my Instagram stories on the regular like daily. Yes. Get outside. Yeah. And then, I mean, you came. You on, made me walk. Yeah, you came on a signature walk. Tara, with me. that was a long walk. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was it was good. But I was yeah. like, I was kind of huffing and puffing at the end. Like by the time I'm we got to I wasn't there. <laughs> You would have made it, man. No, no. Like when we got to your house at the end, I'm like, I think my underwear are wet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was getting outside. That was like we got outside. Yeah. Yeah, no. And it was winter. We put on the layers. Like, but but the thing is, like, uh, what I like about it is you do you drag people into your healthy ways. It get, well, I, I think mean, that that's lovely. The accountability works for me. Yes. And I think that that's the thing about everything that we're saying here is I think mm. we've each pointed out something that works individually for us. For yeah. you, maybe it's September. For you, it's smaller goals. Mm. For me, it's being inclusive. And that's mm -hmm. why resolutions are weird because they are supposedly this like thing that works for everybody. And nothing works for everybody. That's right. But I don't want to do away with them, though, because I want yeah. people to always think that they can better themselves. Yes. Sure. Right? Like, sure. some people to be like, oh, January 1st, I'm Forget still going to be the same person I was <laughs> for the past 10 years. Why yes. are you going to try and be better? No, I still think we should try to strive to be better, but just do it on our own calendar. Baby I'm gonna steps, books. everyone. I'm going to Tracy Moore. There you go. More books. Oh, I got lots I'm of books not. for you. <laughs> Let's go to break. We have more coming up. Stay with us. <laughs> sparking joy and happiness. And I just want to drive the point home. There are so many little things that we can do to get a little bit of joy. Like I put on the full green outfit and a yellow shoe. Can you, <laughs> I can't. Yes. That's yes. joyful. Um, that's joyful for me. The colors, the little joy jar. Sometimes it's a little thing that's going to make a big difference. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And then you spread that on to the people around you. You know what? This audience made me happy today. Yeah. 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 Ye